Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're doing another Get Good at Blender episode. Now we're up to episode 12, but this may be a slight step backwards as I think there's some important techniques in here that are worth developing with our hard surface modeling skills. So as usual, they'll start off nice and easy and I'll build up the complexity. So remember the format, I show you the shape, you have a go at creating it, and then I'll show you how I went about making it. Okay, so here's our first shape, a nice easy one to get us going. So see how you get on with that. Okay, so this should be a fairly simple one this time. So Shift A to add, mesh plane. I'll grab that in the Y axis and move it over slightly. Let's get to top view and just scale it up so they're roughly the same size. Now into edit mode with tab, control R to do a few loop cuts using my wheel, left click and left click again to apply them in position. So this one, I can press G then Z and move it up. But this one I can't press G then Z because one end is higher than the other. So I'll go to vertex mode for that, G then Z and pull that one down over there. This one's a bit higher so I can press G then Z on that and pull it upwards, but it looks like it slopes down at the end here. So I'll need a couple more loop cuts there by the looks of things. And I need this vertex to line up with that one. So that one and that one to line up. So I can press S Z zero to line them up together. And in fact, this one wants to be the same height as them. Now what I can do rather than selecting all three and scaling Z zero, if I'm happy with the height here, I can get this one to match those by going up to snapping. So turn snapping on and change it to vertex. Then I can select this vertex, press G then Z. So it's going in the Z axis, but whatever vertex I click on, it will match that in the Z axis. So I can click on that one. And there we go, we've got the rough shape. Now I can go to add modifiers, subdivision surface modifier there. I'll up the viewport count and I'll go into object mode with tab, right click, shade smooth. So we're roughly the same as the other one although this is a bit higher. So hopefully that wasn't too difficult for you and was just a bit of a reminder. Okay, so here's the next object. Again, nice and easy, and hopefully nothing too complicated there. If you are finding this a bit tricky, then make sure you've looked at the previous episodes. Okay, so I'll go to top view again, move my 3D cursor to here with shift right click, shift A to add mesh plane. I'll scale it up so it's the same size, so S then X roughly the same size, and S then Y, roughly the same size. Now I believe for this one I put a mirror modifier in the middle, so I'll just go to edit mode so you can see my topology. And that's just an option, I'm not sure it made it that much faster and may have even slowed me down. But I do use this later on for the next ones. So you might want to add a mirror modifier to yours. So I'll click on my shape. The quick way to add a mirror is to press N on your keyboard, go to edit and then auto mirror. Make sure you've got the add-on enabled, so File, Preferences, Add-ons, type in Auto Mirror, make sure it's ticked. And I can Auto Mirror in the X axis. It adds a mirror for me, I can go back into my shape, and there's my mirror. So I've obviously done some loop cuts down here, so Control R to add some loop cuts. Around there, double left click, and Control R to there, double left click. Then into face mode, select this face, and you may think it's a good idea just to E to extrude now, or I'll just turn snapping off, E to extrude and pull it down. But what I prefer to do is add an inset. So I to inset and press B for boundary. So it sticks to the boundary. Now notice with my inset what's happening and why is it not conforming to the shape correctly. If I go back into object mode and come up to item, you can see that my scale is non-uniform. So because I scaled not in edit mode, my inset is trying to follow that scale. So I'll undo those changes, and it's undone my mirror as well, I'll just add that again. Into object mode and control A to set the scale. And you can see they're all at one. Now when I go into here and press I to inset, you can see that they're all uniform. Now have a think why I did an inset. So the answer to that is thinking about proximity loops. If I extrude downwards now, not quite that far, G then Z. Oh, and I've undone the snapping as well, there we go. So now if I add the subdivision surface modifier just here, I'll minimize my mirror and up the viewport count. And I'll also, into object mode, right click, shade smooth. So there's a few things going on here. What I'm going to do is select on both and go to edit mode so we can see the topology of both. And then the wrong way around, so I'll just quickly rotate this one. So you can see that there's a difference between the curvature 
around here. This one's sharper into the corner and this one curves much more. So again, think why that is. And you should be able to notice the difference. I've got a loop down here and a loop down there. So as soon as I add this loop down here, it creates a proximity loop to this one and therefore makes my corner sharper. The same down here, control R, and you can see Whichever way I go, it makes that corner sharper because it's acting as a proximity loop. So if I right click now, that will cancel any movement, but keep the loop cut there. Now you might be able to see as well, this is a slightly sharper edge than this one. And that's because of the proximity loop, control R around here. So now it's getting a bit closer, but this one is slightly sharper than this one. And again, these edges are tighter together than these edges. The one last thing you might notice is that my topology up here is slightly different. So I did this one in a slightly different way, just for an example. I'll quickly set this up again and show you what's going on. Okay, so for this one, I did an inset like this, which keeps the topology in straight lines. So I'll undo that. This time I'll extrude downwards. So I've forgotten to do my inset. And then I'll select the edges around here, so edge mode, and select these three edges, and I can bevel them. So you can see my bevel changing the shape of the topology around it. It's doing the same topology as the other one, but it's not the same shape. And I can use my wheel to create that proximity loop on the inside. So there are slight differences between these techniques. The bevel creates a curve down here, and this one is flat at the top. The bevel also changes the shape of the topology around it, whereas this one keeps it all nice and rigid. So there's the inset versus the bevel. So something to think about when you're modeling. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, slightly more tricky perhaps. I've used the same model from the previous just here and extended it. So you can do the same if you like. See how you get on. Okay, so I will do exactly that. I'll bring in the other model and move it roughly in line. So into edit mode, let's select these edges here, and then I'll extrude out in the Y the same length of the back shape here. So there's a space, and then there's that shape, and I can therefore select these two faces here and extrude them upwards, which I'll do now. I'll select these two, and just come to the front here, E, then Z, and move them upwards. And it looks like there's more of a curve, so I'll grab this edge here in the Z and move it down. Okay, so we've got that shape roughly. So that's a nice easy way to start. So think about the shapes separately. And now I'm going to put these side bits in. So I'll need to come into here and do a loop cut down the middle. And I'll need to stick out this way. Now, of course, the bottom here is sharper, but I can do that once I've created the main bulk of the shape. So I'll go to face mode and I want to somehow make a face coming out of here, but I can't just select this one and press extrude because it overlaps the others. So I'll undo that. What I need to do actually is delete these faces. Then I can select this edge here and extrude it outwards in the X axis. Now this would help if I was snapping to this line here. So I'll undo that and I'll go up to snapping again with vertex enabled. E to extrude in the X axis and I can just hover over any of these vertices and left click. E to extrude in the X and go to the next one. So now I can go to edge mode, select this edge in here, going down here. If you can't see it so well, then use the on cage option and you can see it a bit more easily. I find that a bit confusing though, so I'm gonna turn it off for now. And I can press F to fill in that face. I'll actually turn the subdivision surface modifier off completely so you can see what's going on here. So the inside edge there, I can press F to fill. The normal way is to select two edges and press F to fill, but this is a much quicker way. If I undo that and select that edge, I can just press F, 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 and it will fill them all in. Okay, subdivision surface modifier back on. Now I can start thinking about proximity loops. So I can press Control R and pull this one down here, which is definitely helping us a bit. And I'm noticing there's a slight change around the side here. So I need to fill this gap in. But it may be the case that you've done a few loop cuts around here, and it may be a bit awkward to just press that F command. So I'll match up this proximity loop coming around here by pressing Control R down here. Now have a think what the command is so I can make it flat like the bottom here and not slope down like the top one here. So it's E for even. Now if I press G then Z, I've got snapping turned on so I can 
line it up with this one over here and left click. Now I can press edge mode and fill these two in here with F. I can press Control R, create a loop cut here, and then select this one, F, and I can press F again. So we're getting to a similar state as this one is. Let's just compare the topology. So I'll select both and go into edit mode for both. So we can see that there's another loop cut around the middle here, which will tighten up certain areas. And we can also see that these two edges are across a bit in the X. Now I've got snapping turned on, so I'll just turn that off and press G then X. Now also on this one, I've got a proximity loop down here. But before I do that, I'm going to talk about marking the mean crease. And you can see in here, there's some purple lines and that's where I've marked a mean crease. So let's select those edge loops. If I go to on cage, I'll be able to see them a bit easier. So I'll alt left click across these. I'm having to press it several times because alt left click will only select up to a pole and you can see a pole there, hence why I keep clicking it. So let's go up to the mean crease options, which are under item, and we'll increase the crease to somewhere around there. And these down here are slightly more creased, so I'll increase those. And we can see a slight difference still, that's because I've got a couple of loop cuts coming down here, so I'll just add those. And let's go into object mode and compare. Okay, so that crease there, where it stops, is causing a lot of pinching. So if you want to use those creases, you'll need to help yourself with a proximity loop where necessary. So there's a proximity loop there, and now we've got something that resembles that a bit more. It still does have a slight bit of pinching because we're going from a crease into a pole like this. And this is something that you need to decide. If I do another proximity loop here, I can use that to help support this crease and maybe even take the crease off. And can you see how they look very similar now. I feel like the crease looks better in this one, but I've got a dip now in this section here, which there isn't in this one. So the proximity loop is interfering with this edge depending on what I want it to look like. So you can even out your topology by pressing GG to edge slide, and maybe this one as well, GG edge slide, and then back into object mode, and you can see I'm matching up with what we've got over here, if that's what you desire. Also, you can see the proximity loop up the top here may be causing slight issues because these are quite close together. I'll move this one closer in so you can see that. In fact, I'll turn on cage off so we can see where that's going. And I'll go nice and close. And you can possibly see that there's a slight anomaly going up here and into here. So what we would need to do is with this one, GG to edge slide to even that topology out across the top there. So if you're using proximity loops, bear in mind that you might have slight pinching where they're closer together and then there's gaps in other places. So the distance between your lines is all important when doing subdivision surface modeling. But you can kind of see the limitations of that crease method. You've got a bit less control going into these areas. However, what this has done is added lots of topology all across my shape, which marking creases hasn't done in this one. So it is much easier to model. And those are things that you need to weigh up between the two. Okay, so on to the last one, trying to use our experience that we've earned from creating holes in shapes and so forth. See how you get on with that. Okay, so I'll bring back my old one and just put that in front and I'll edit the shape slightly. So the hole in here should be fairly simple. We can go in and select that face and extrude it inwards. We can then sharpen this edge up in three ways. So have a think what those three ways are. Well, the first way is before I do the hole, I need to inset. So I for inset and then inset, and we've got that sharp edge. The second way, if I go back to that, E to extrude is to select these edges around here and press Control B to bevel. But it does change the shape of your surrounding topology. So watch out for that. It may affect the areas up here. And you can see this edge is becoming slightly sharper by moving these edges around here. And the last way, if I undo that, is to increase the crease. And in this case, I think increasing that crease was certainly the easiest and quickest. Okay, so how do we create this section in here? I'll select the two and go into edit mode. And you can see that it's basically being cut out. So I can go to face mode and select these faces along here. I can control click on this one to select all the faces in between and press delete faces. Now let's select this edge here. Let's go to top view and let's turn snapping on. 
Icon E to extrude in the X, snap to that one, E X, snap to the next one, and keep going along. I'll turn snapping off now, and I'll come into here. I can now select this end edge here, and press F, then F. Now this is slightly more awkward. I've got a cut down here, and there's several ways of doing this. The quickest in this case is probably to delete this edge here, so Control X to dissolve the edge, I should have said. And then we can select these two, turn snapping on, E to extrude in the X, up to that point. And it's interesting if you choose either of these verts, how the snapping behaves. So we'll have to choose the bottom one in this case. Then we can select all and merge the vertices with Alt M and by distance. And that merges them together and it creates the same shape. And then I'd need to do the same for the other side. But I'll just quickly undo that and I'll show you another technique. What I can do, is go to vertex mode and press E to extrude in the X axis and move that across until it snaps in the middle. Now I can press two to go to edge mode, select this one edge and press fill and this edge and press fill. So I don't have to merge anything and it's filled them all in nicely. So I'll quickly do the same on the other side. Select this edge, F, F, one to go to vertex mode, E to extrude in the X axis until it snaps to the middle. Obviously you have to have clipping enabled back to edge mode and fill that face with F and that face with F. And we've got something fairly similar. Let's go into edit mode and see what we did here. Now, of course I could do a proximity loop to make these look a bit sharper, or as I've done over here, I can select these edges along here and increase the crease. So again, increasing the crease is a lot easier than having to do some edge loops here and so forth. I'll undo those. Okay, so hopefully you found that helpful and that gave you some ideas about modeling your shapes and hard surface objects. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.